After we thoroughly examined the brand new Luba 2 AWD robotic lawnmower from Mamotion in the last video, today, as promised, we present the separate video on the assembly, setup, and commissioning of the lawnmower. We'll go step by step through the best practices for assembly and the crucial points to consider during setup to achieve excellent results with the new Luba 2 in practice. By the way, if you haven't seen the review of the lawnmower yet, make sure to check it out. I'll link it right here on the info card at the top right. And with that, let's get started. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to not miss any future videos. You can support this channel by checking the current prices of the robot listed below in the video description. Thank you very much for your support. And now, let's begin. The previous review of the lawnmower already showed that the contents of the Luba 2 package, just like with the first version I introduced to you, are very, very extensive. The robotic lawnmower is placed in the center, securely held by several custom-fit styrofoam inserts, which also keep the small accessories in place. The engineers at Mamotion put a lot of effort into the packaging. After unpacking all the individual components, and please make sure no small parts are left in the packaging, we can get an initial overview. The contents of the Luba 2 package are identical for all models, and as you can see, it's quite comprehensive, which doesn't necessarily make the installation easier. Let's see the best way to proceed with this. However, before we can start the actual installation, it's important to find a suitable location for the charging station and antenna. While boundary wire devices can be placed almost anywhere, GPS devices are quite picky. To ensure the robotic lawnmower has a sufficiently good position, both the charging station and the GNSS antenna must have an unobstructed view of the sky and should not be covered by large trees or roof overhangs. Specifically, the distance to trees, house walls, or similar obstacles should be at least 2 meters, or an angle of less than 45 degrees should be maintained. I personally would recommend choosing an even greater distance to ensure that enough satellites can be received. Alternatively, the GNSS receiver can also be mounted directly on the building, such as on the gable of the house, as high as possible for the best reception. Mamotion provides a suitable wall mount for this, just like with the Luba 1, which can be purchased optionally if needed. It's important to mention that the standard package already includes a 10 meter long cable and a power adapter for the GNSS antenna. This allows us to mount the antenna independently of the charging station. Contrary to common belief, the antenna does not necessarily have to be connected at the charging station. It's sufficient to power it using the separate power adapter. Another important criterion is that the Luba's charging station must be placed on a level surface. The best way to check this is with a simple spirit level. The reason is as follows. If the station is significantly tilted or unstable, the lawnmower might not dock properly with the station, causing the charging contacts to miss and the mower not to charge correctly. Once we've found the perfect positions for the charging station and the GNSS antenna, we can begin the assembly. During assembly, I found that unlike the first Luba generation, it's not advisable to anchor the charging station directly to the ground right away, but rather to do the wiring first, especially if you want to mount the antenna right next to the charging station. If we look at the back of the charging station, we find under the foldable cover two connections, one for power and one for the antenna. If we want the cables to be as inconspicuous as possible, as I do, then the following approach is the right way. Otherwise, you can save yourself the hassle and simply connect the cables through the cover from behind. In my case, it's important that the cables are hidden as much as possible, even if it involves a bit more effort. So, we start by taking the two metal rods. The GNSS antenna is mounted on the rod with the side cutout. It's simply screwed onto the rod through the large clamp, making sure to guide the cable correctly. 
Since the cable outlet is now in the middle, the cable must first be fed through the rod from the top, and then we can mount the antenna on the rod. There's an elongated cutout on the side where the cables come out. Unfortunately, internal routing all the way to the bottom is not possible, which I believe should definitely be improved. Subsequently, we can feed the antenna cable through the hole in the charging station and connect it from the bottom. To facilitate this process, it's advisable to tilt the charging station forward. It's very important not to press the cable into the small cutout at this point. This will be done later. Additionally, the power cable also needs to be connected from the bottom, which we can do at the same time. There's a small cutout in the middle for this as well. Now we mount the lower rod and the ground spike. There's a large thread in the middle for screwing the rods together, ensuring a stable connection. On the underside, there's another small internal thread where the ground spike is mounted. The next step is a bit tricky, so it's best to get a helping hand for this part. Included in the package is a flat metal cover, which we place and hold at the opening of the charging station. The ground spike with the antenna is then fed through the cutout in the charging station and both are laid flat on the ground. Only then can we finally secure the antenna cable on the underside. There are several small cutouts for optimized cable routing where we press the cable in to fix it. Afterwards, we set up the antenna and charging station. Since the antenna cable is very short for some reason, we need to lift the charging station a bit to securely anchor the long ground spike into the ground. Once this is done, we can securely anchor the station into the ground with the five ground screws and also fix the power cable to the ground with the included ground nails. Finally, we can use the included cable clips to fix the cable to the antenna rod so it doesn't hang loose. Caution, do not overstretch the plastic cable clips as they can break quite easily, as I found out myself. With that, we've completed the first part. The charging station and antenna are fully assembled and ready for use. However, before we can move on to setting up the lawnmower, we need to finish assembling it as well. As you can see from the package contents, we have the lawnmower, the camera module, bumper screws, and a screwdriver. After removing the sticker, we start with the assembly of the bumper, which is slightly different compared to the first version. There's a cable in the middle and a corresponding connector on the lawnmower, which we first connect. Once this is done, we insert the bumper module straight into the slot on the front of the lawnmower without tilting it and lock it securely in place. For orientation, the centrally installed LED on the bumper must face upwards. After mounting the module, we find two small threaded holes on the top, right, and left. At these points, we now mount the two small screws included in the package. This ensures we cannot press the release mechanism of the bumper module to remove it without tools, providing appropriate theft protection. We proceed similarly with the camera module. As you can see, there's a white cover held by four screws. These screws need to be removed. Once this is done, we find the two connector cables for the camera module in the underlying compartment. These are connected, and accidental swapping is impossible due to the different shapes of the plugs. The last step is to install the orange safety key. On the back, we find a small cutout where we insert one of the two safety keys included in the package. Otherwise, the robot cannot be activated. And that's it. Now we can move on to the second and final part of the setup and commissioning of the lawnmower. The first and most important step is to download the Mamotion app onto our mobile devices. In the operating manual of the lawnmower, there's a QR code that, when scanned, takes us directly to the manufacturer's app, or alternatively, we can search for Mamotion in the App Store or Play Store. After downloading the app, we need to create a user account to activate the lawnmower. By previously inserting and charging the lawnmower in the charging station, it should already be fully booted up, allowing us to connect directly to the device. Alternatively, turn on the robot. In the app, we find a button with a plus symbol at the bottom of the home screen to add the robot. After clicking it, we're asked which version we want to connect with, as the app is the same for both the first and second generations of Luba. 
We are then prompted to mount the charging station, antenna, and camera module, which we've already done, so we can skip this step. The app will then automatically start searching for nearby devices via Bluetooth. In my case, the robot was found immediately without any issues, and a click on the name of the visible robot is enough to initiate the connection process. The lawnmower will then attempt to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Alternatively, we can connect the device to our smartphone's hotspot. There were no major issues connecting it to my Wi-Fi network, similar to the first generation of Luba. The connection was established fairly quickly after an initial failed attempt. Next, a prompt will appear on the home screen to update the robot's firmware to the latest version. Depending on how fast your Wi-Fi connection is in the garden, the update process might take a few minutes, during which the robot may restart several times. In my case, I had to install two separate updates consecutively before the robot was ready to use. Once this is done, the app's status bar should now show the connection with the lawnmower via Bluetooth and also a network connection with the device. What follows is the creation of different zones, or the mapping of our lawn. For mapping, we click Open Map at the bottom center of the home screen and then Create Area, where we receive a brief introduction on what to consider during mapping. After reading or skipping through all the points, we arrive at the final control view. By clicking the start symbol at the bottom right, we can automatically drive the mower out of the station and begin mapping our lawn. Control is done via two small joysticks on the smartphone screen, allowing us to steer the robot through our garden. The precise control of the robot, much like a small remote-controlled car, is extremely easy and requires almost no adjustment period, even if you've never done it before. Otherwise, you can, of course, do a few test runs before starting the actual mapping. When ready, drive the robot along the boundaries of the lawn and save. During this process, the mower tracks its position and scans the surroundings with its camera for notable points to create a digital map. Therefore, precisely driving along the boundaries is crucial. If you're not satisfied with the result, it's better to remap the area or correct it with the eraser symbol, as the precision of future navigation along the boundaries depends on our initial mapping. As I determined in the previous review, a distance of about 15 centimeters should be maintained from protruding lawn edges. This ensures that the robot does not drive onto the boundary or scrape along protruding lawn edges. In contrast, for edge-free mowing, if there's enough space, the mower should be maneuvered along the boundary during mapping to ensure that the edge of the lawn is also cleanly mowed. The required distance and how far the robot really crosses the boundary were thoroughly tested in the review video. Once we have completely circled the area with the mapping and returned to the starting point, the mower will automatically recognize this, and we can complete the mapping or add other elements such as no-go areas, connecting paths between two zones or similar. Adding additional zones is done just like the first zone, except we should add a connecting path for each additional zone so the mower knows how to get from zone A to zone B. I find it quite convenient that we can easily carry the Luba to another lawn area separated by steps from the first one and map it there. There doesn't need to be a direct connection for the robot to mow this area. Of course, in this case, we'll always have to carry it from zone A to zone B, as it can't drive down the steps by itself. Therefore, I would recommend creating connecting paths wherever possible. To do this, we click on the small road symbol on the far right, which represents the transition between two zones. We then drive to the position in the first zone where the transition should start. We confirm the action and guide the mower with the joysticks to the other zone, just like in the previous mapping. As you can see, a connecting path, which looks like a small road, now appears at the transition point between the two zones. The mower will use this path to travel from one zone to the other. Another important feature in the Mamotion app is setting up no-go zones. These or should avoid, such as open flower beds or newly planted areas. Creating such a zone is done in the same way as a regular zone. 
We select the no-go zone option, move the mower to the point where the zone should start, begin mapping, drive around the area, and save it. In practice, the mower will now strictly avoid and bypass this area. Okay, so much for the mapping. Next, we can make a few more small settings that are also highly recommended. One of these is, of course, creating a schedule. On the home screen, we find a small button labeled schedule at the bottom. Here, we can tell the mower exactly when to mow the different zones to make the work as efficient as possible. For example, if I want it to mow zone 1 from 10 to 12 o'clock and zone 2 from 2 to 6 o'clock, I can set this with just a few clicks and also transfer these settings to other zones or adjust them later. The cutting height, cutting pattern, and edge cutting can also be individually adjusted for each zone. To do this, we click on the zone we want to edit on the home screen. We can then set the cutting height for this zone and tell the mower whether to cover the entire lawn area once or twice, for example, to achieve the nice checkerboard pattern look. We can also set how wide the spacing between the parallel lines should be. I personally recommend leaving this at the default settings. Regarding edge cutting, we can set how many rounds the mower should make around the edge of the lawn. The app offers a number from 1 to 4. The mower does not follow the same path each time but moves slightly inward with each round of edge cutting. From the test video, I can say that the rounds are, in my opinion, recommended and completely sufficient to achieve good results. As you can see, in practice, it's possible without difficulties to create and manage multiple zones. The only improvement I would wish for is for Mamotion to use a longer cable for the antenna, which would make the setup significantly easier. And that concludes everything about setting up the robot. I hope the video can help you. If so, please show it with a thumbs up to support my work. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel for free and activate the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Feel free to leave questions and suggestions in the comments below. I look forward to your feedback. You can find the current prices of the device to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you for your support. Stay healthy, take care, and see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.